everyone. Thanks for coming in this morning, and uh, thanks to Adam for uh, showing me what a professional talk looks like. This won't be that. <laughs> so uh, this is about preparing for a high traffic event, and hopefully some simple steps that you can take to help uh, increase the chances of it being successful. And that still says subtitle headline. Yeah, choice. Um, so hi, I'm Sean, uh, technical account manager uh, slash problem solver slash I, I have a lot of hats that I put on at Amazie IO. And I'm based out of Wellington, which you can see is at the bottom of the planet right there. It's a flat earth. <laughs> and um, with them on Twitter, with them on Drupal.org, so if you want, you can ask me questions on Twitter. You can find me after this presentation if you want to go into any go into depth on anything I talk about. So first of all, what is a high traffic event? Well, this is the obvious one. Like we didn't have something, and now we do have something. It's probably a high traffic event. We're migrating from Sitecore to Drupal. It's probably high traffic. This is probably one you don't know about, but your marketers are actually doing this every day, and they don't tell you. Black Friday, that's an example of a planned event. It could be the Australian Open. It happens every year. You know about it. Or it could be that you don't know about it, and it's your own news and media site, for instance, and Donald Trump says something on Twitter, which is every day. So step one. I think this is just the baseline. Like, you need to do some basic Drupal stuff. And I probably don't need to tell anyone in this room, but there's some really problematic modules with Drupal that you maybe want to avoid. I could talk for 40 minutes on radioactivity. It's a terrible module. If you use it, I'll find you. Um, the statistics module is in core. I don't think it should be. Let's just say that much. Um, page cache. Yeah, if you have a reverse proxy, you don't need page cache. Dynamic page cache, though, is useful if you have authenticated users. And what is your minimum cache lifetime? Is it five minutes, an hour, 30 days? Has someone thought about that? Or has someone just like pushed it from a development box six months ago and forgot about it? Yeah. Have you turned stuff on? And if you want, have a chat with Carl and Josh, and they'll talk to you all about Drutney. But Drutney is a way to help audit your site and uh, you know, check for these things in an automated fashion. So if you launch sites all the time, you should really be using you know, tools that do your job for you. And uh, another of my uh, passions is a CDM. So I could talk definitely a lot about this, but I'm going to smash it into one slide. Uh, use one. I don't care how small your site is, you should use one. And you can think of it like an insurance policy. It's there, it's got your back. It does really cool stuff, like tiered caching. So you can have <laughs> multiple points of presence all over the world, and then one that's closest to your origin, and they'll talk to each other before talking to you. And now that you have a CDN, how do you go about actually utilizing it effectively. So every request that goes through your CDN is problematic. The most, yeah, the highest performing Drupal site will have 100% cache offload or close to it. And yeah, these are the types of things that I see all the time when people launch a site that they just don't, yeah, they just forget about. Especially if you are replatforming, you're gonna have a lot of 404s. People have a, an old URL structure, move into a new one. No one created the redirect map. So there's like a boatload of 404s. Sometimes you use AdWords. And fun fact, AdWords has a, a query parameter called GCLID, which is unique, guaranteed for every user and every click. So that is not fun. Uh, redirects, as mentioned. And uh, have you thought about all the people that are just trying to scan your site every day? Like, even though you're running Drupal, someone will ask for wp-login.php. I guarantee it. Like, it just happens. And last year, I did a talk on WAF tuning specifically with Cloudflare. So if you are interested in that, go watch that talk. And because Adam didn't have any, I'm going to have some memes. So 
Yeah, this actually happened to a customer of mine. They had a marketing department, they launched a new product, it was amazing, they took out their site. So, yeah, AdWords is problematic. Low testing. So, I guess the key thing here is do it. Uh, that's probably my first piece of advice. Um, and my next piece of advice is if you, do, if you don't have someone who does it in your resource plan, go find someone who does. Because Jimmy who does CSS doesn't do load testing. It is complicated. Emulation of user activities and paths, emulation of all the requests, timings, concurrency, the uncertainty factor, how many people are actually gonna visit your site? Do you know? Can you do a scientific wild ass guess on that? It's iterative. You don't just do it and then you say it's done. You do it, you improve, you get better, you do it again. And closely related to that is scaling. So now that you have in place your hardware that you think you can deal with the event, what happens when you get more or less? because you don't want to pay for hardware you're not using, and similarly, you don't want to go down if you get too much traffic. So you need to consider auto-scaling, and you need to consider a platform that auto-scales. And test the auto-scaler. So we learned from uh, previous Next that Skipper does really cool stuff with FPM procs and is able to do auto-scaling on really cool metrics. Uh, you can also scale on like CPU and RAM and all sorts of other things, but I guess the key idea is here to test the autoscaler. Make sure it triggers at the right point. Make sure it goes down at the right point. Make sure you're comfortable with how long it takes to do that. And that's pretty much what happens when it's not done right, is that you just leave a problem for someone else, and it's typically your poor ops team, so think of your ops team, give them some love. And this, if, I guess if you had one slide to kind of come away with, you know, have a good fallback. So plan for the worst. Like what happens when you know, your site does go down? Say a developer pushes a bad you know, commit. Say a content editor edits the view on the homepage and removes pagination and you get a thousand items on your homepage and the homepage ohms and you know, chaos reigns. So what is the next best experience you can offer if your origin is dead? So most CDNs will have a feature called load balancing. So why not have a hot cluster sitting somewhere else? And I know Kurt sitting in the audience here does this with one of his important sites. Yeah, this is an insurance policy. And then Test it. So uh, Netflix has something called, the like, architecture called Chaos Monkey, right? Where they just start pulling out, effectively turning off VMs and killing pods. And you just keep doing it. See, so just what happens? Does the system respond? Does the load balancing flick over? Do we see a disruption in service? And someone, uh, Carl, sent me this picture, which I thought was hilarious. So, this is a real image from ABC News from a couple days ago. This is their good fallback. This is one of the busiest sites, I'd say, in the news industry in Australia. I mean, it's pretty helpful. It tells you the website's terrible, but it's not actually that useful. So if I was ABC News, I'd have maybe a scraper running every minute. I would stick that content in an S3 bucket, and then I'd get the CDN to swip over to the bucket. There's an answer. Or maybe the CDN could be configured to, when the origin's dead, to serve the older content it has in its cache that maybe is no longer valid. So you, know, you might say the home page is good for one minute, and after one minute, you go to the origin, it's dead. So you just go, have that really old, you know, one minute old page. It's still probably okay. Warm your cache. 
So this is probably makes more sense if you have a large website with a lot of content that's not hit very often. Like a news and media site is a good example of this. Uh, but there's a really cool module uh, called Warmer, which is pluggable. And out of the box, um, it has integration to read your sitemap and run through a crawler to actually request all those URLs. Um, it can also warm your entity caches in Drupal and all the, it's pluggable, so if you want to do a special warming process that maybe is different from other people. Um, yeah. Best picture of the slide. Know your third party API integration points. So this matters when Drupal is rendering content that is actually sourced from somewhere else. And Drupal is entirely dependent on that API. And uh, it, what a lot of people fail to grok is that if Drupal is trying to request that API and the API is having a sad time, say it's slow or say you're in a high traffic event and the API is not as fast as what it normally is, you're actually tying the speed and availability of your application to the API. So even though your, you know, your, hope, your website has a 99.95 uptime SLA, the API might be maintained by Bob from accounting and it sits on a Raspberry Pi under his desk. And it's always good to know. And yeah, and the really tricky part here is that if uh, you, your API does die, you need to have a way to you know, still be up. So there's, there's a couple of ways you can mitigate this. You can move the API request to the front end to a JavaScript application, and that way if the API is dead, your page still can say something semi-intelligent. And if you want to visualize this, you can use tools like New Relic. They have an external request uh, feature. So if uh, PHP is reaching out, you can find out generally how often and generally how fast that API is. Analytics. So when you're under a high traffic event, you need to know as close to real time as you can possibly get it, what's going on. So how the system is currently performing, how many requests are you getting, where are they coming from, What's your CDN's cache offload rate? Is it good? Can it be better? So yeah, just being able to have uh, this data on hand so that you can make judgments, you can react to this in real time. Yeah, that's how you win. If you start to see like a, a classic example was um, on a high traffic event maybe two years ago, a fun fact for Drupal 8 is you can have index.php forward slash and then any path, and that will still work, except now you've got two versions of your site on the internet, and someone on Twitter is sharing the wrong link, and yeah, anyway, it gets out of hand very quickly. So you need to have a way to redirect that path in a wildcard fashion back to um, what it should be. So knowing what tools you have at your disposal is quite useful. So can you change Nginx configuration? Can you change the CDN? Can you change Drupal? Can you do a hotfix release? How long does it take? Do you need to clear the cache? Like, you need to know the answers to all of these questions so that you know what tools you have in your tool belt to fix problems when they come up. And to let you know kind of where you can take this, this is real. Can't tell you the name of the event, but you can look at the countries and kind of work out what kind of group they lie in. And this event was on the Gold Coast three years ago. Um, but we had uh, a dub 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 offload, which was Drupal, 98.46. That was actually low, we got that higher. And a results dot, which was a third party system, but we looked after it. And we could see requests in near real time, this is probably five minutes delayed, and we could actually spot problems in the other application that wasn't Drupal before they knew about it. And this was on a big projector sitting on the 
big wall and it had exact visibility. So yeah, make a song and dance about it. Like make it real, make your stats live. Yeah, I talked about this already, but um, being able to respond to those events. So personally, I love page rules in Cloudflare. Page rules are, I don't know, like an unsung hero of uh, a high traffic event. Um, for uh, yeah, the Australian Open, I think we ended up using 40 something to give you some sense of how many we added after the game started. So just responding to little tweaks here and there, fixing up silly things that were happening. and Because um, when you are in a pinch, sometimes you need to go through change control to get changes released. Sometimes a Drupal application change is impossible because it requires seven meetings and by then the problem's already gonna be gone. Yeah, so knowing what you have in your, in your tool belt there to help solve uh, those issues. Come on. Right, uh, number 11, uh, let your hosting provider know. So don't have a high traffic event by yourself. <laughs> Tell people, tell your hosting provider, tell your support team, tell your business team, tell people to be on the watch for it. Uh, you know, and yeah, I love this picture, but yeah, hug ops. So be nice to your ops team. Like, <laughs> don't go yell at them when the site's down and because it was your fault because you didn't let them know. And to kind of wrap this up, put a bow on it, right? Like what does success for your high traffic event look like? So you have minimal requests flowing through from your CDN. Your CDN is, an, I think, a good thing to aim for in a high traffic event is 99.9 .9 plus percent offload. If you can get in that realm, then you have a much better time. Your hardware graphs are boring. Boring is good. Flat lines, good. <coughs> No rants on Twitter might be too hard, but at least no trending hashtag census fail is a classic Australian uh, trending hashtag. So you don't want your own fail tag. So avoid that. And yeah, users will remember the event for its content and not the problems. And that's the main thing. Hopefully they'll walk away with. And that's all I have. Any questions? No, no I'm, questions? I'm happy to take one-on-ones after as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, we've got morning tea next. Great. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you.